tutorial 7, case 4. I'm picking up with step 5. Before I start step 5, I'd like to talk to you a bit about this if function. In the previous video, I created this if function that would determine if the fabric in the hat was felt, which is more expensive, the customer would pay a $15 surcharge. If it's not felt, then of course there's no surcharge. I think a better way to handle this $15, rather than hard coding it in, is to refer to the product information sheet cell E9. So I'm going to do that here. I'm going to click on the product information sheet and click on cell E9 and you can see it's substituting that reference there. And then I'll press enter or you can click this little check mark over here. And I think that might be a better way to deal with that. All right, let's start with um, protecting the worksheet. Now, protecting a worksheet typically involves two steps. The first step is to remove locks from the cells that you want to remain open, that you want to be able to type in. And then the second step is to protect the sheet. So because we have cells that we want to remain open, like the name address information, as well as, and I'm going to hold down control to select the hat information, we're going to start by right clicking and choosing format cells, protection, and we're going to remove this feature it's actually called locked and that's not correct. What it really means is that these cells contain a lock. That's all it means. So when I click this button, it removes the locks from those cells. Therefore, when I protect the sheet, these cells remain unlocked. So click OK and now go to the Review tab and click Protect Sheet. Don't use a password and click OK. So now you should not be able to type in any other cell I'll try just typing here on the unit price and you can see that I get a message. But I will be able to type here on the cells that I remove the locks from. Next is go to the documentation sheet and just protect that sheet in its entirety. Again, don't use a password. Click OK. And now both of these sheets are protected. Let's go to step six where we save the workbook. OK, let's save the workbook. You can just do that with a control S. And we'll go to step seven. In step seven, we're going to create a macro called print invoice that prints just the invoice. We're going to give it a shortcut key. We're going to describe it. And in the macro, we're going to set the print area for the invoice. We're going to put in a header. We're going to center the sheet horizontally. So let's begin by creating a macro. So we'll go to the developer tab. We'll choose record macro. We're going to name it print invoice. Can't use spaces. I'm going to give it a control shift P command. And then we'll describe it here, prints the invoice. Once I click OK, the um, macro is on. It is recording. And so I can start my steps. My first step is to set the print range. So I'm going to highlight from, uh, I guess it's A1 down to H25. And in page layout, we'll go to print area and set the print area. Now I want to get my header in there before I start printing. So I'm going to click the more button under page setup. And I'll go to header and footer. This is a custom header. And we're going to type the word invoice with spaces between each of the letters. Click OK. Let's do a print preview from here. And you can see that it would, oh, I forgot about the horizontal centering. So I'm going to back up. I'm going to go back into the More button. And under Margins, I want to turn on this horizontal centering. So then we'll Print Preview. And then everything looks good to me. So I'm going to click Print. And then I'm going to stop the macro recording. So I'll go to Developer. Stop recording. So I've got my macro and I want to create a button for my macro so that it will run. You may want to turn off your printer, by the way, so you don't waste paper. I'm going to create a button for my print invoice macro. So I do that in the developer tab and you do it right here in what looks like. OK, I can't do a, a button. Notice how this is grayed out. And the reason for that is that my sheet is protected. When you have sheet protection on and you're trying to do macros, you often have to turn it off. So I'm going to go to Review and I'm going to unprotect the sheet. Then I should be able to go to the Developer tab and insert a button. 
So I'm going to put this button over here on the side and then I'm going to assign the print invoice to it and then I don't want it to say button 8 so I'm going to highlight that and type print invoice. Now when I click away from the button the button becomes hot and if I click the button it will print my invoice. So that concludes step 7. In step 8, we're going to create another macro that's going to clear the input areas. So let's see, I like to always go up to a cell where nothing is when I start a macro. So I'm going to go to A1, and then I'm going to go to Record Macro. I'll call this one Clear Inputs. I'm going to get a, I'm going to give it a shortcut of Control-Shift-C, because I don't want to lose my copy capability. All this macro is going to do, we're in the record mode now, is highlight these cells, press delete to delete it, highlight these cells, and press delete to delete them. Let's stop recording. Let's create a button. We're going to assign the clear inputs to the button, and then we'll highlight the name of the button and type in clear inputs. Click away, and the button is now hot. If I had information, I'll put my name here. And then when I click Clear Inputs, you can see that that clears that out. Let's go to step nine, and we're asked to remove cell protection from the documentation worksheet. We're going to just do that temporarily. So we'll go to Review and Unprotect the Sheet. And then they're gonna ask us to paste all of our range names here. How you do that is you go to Formulas, Use in Formula, which I know doesn't seem like where we want to go, but that's it. And then you go to Paste Names, Paste List, and depending upon how many uh, range names you created, you will get a listing like that. And if you want to, you can give it a heading. Now that we've got that done, we can turn back on the um, sheet protection. So go to Review, Protect Sheet. And remember, I did turn off sheet protection in the invoice, so let's go to protect sheet there. And let's make sure that our um, macros still work with sheet protection. And they do. Uh, it asks us to try both of these uh, buttons we have, and they work. And now the last step is critically important. When you save a file, you have to save it as macro enabled or you'll lose your macros. So let's go to File, Save As. I'm going to save it in my Case 4 folder, and here I'm going to choose Excel Macro Enabled Workbook. That's going to change the extension to XLSM. And so I'm going to call this Hats with Macros to remind me that this is the one that's macro enabled. But just typing the word with macros doesn't make it work. It's this. It's choosing the Save As type. So I'll click Save. Now you'll be able to see up here that the extension is XLSM, and obviously M means macro or macro enabled. Close your workbook. This is the end of the video.